Hey, everybody, welcome back to the next episode of the Pierce Dispatch. I'm sitting here with the one and only Jason Blank. Jason, excited to talk with you. Good morning. So, Jason, tell me a little bit about what you do here at Pierce. Well, uh, I'm a requirements manager for the fleet group. Um, what that means is I handle uh, incoming fire truck uh, projects all the way from bid um, through the uh, pre con phase. And I'm even there to uh, finish up with the uh, final inspections. And I'm shaking your hand goodbye as the truck is getting ready to leave to come to your department. Yeah, requirements managers, I will say for people that are not inside the walls of Pierce, is like one of those jobs that everybody wants. And it's and and when I describe it to other people who haven't come to the to the plant before. As I explained it, it's kind of the switchboard inside of Pierce because you speak so many languages and I don't even think you realize you're doing it is you can like translate the languages super fast. So you got it where it's like, hey, I'm on the phone with manufacturing who needs X, Y, and Z. And I got to convert that to sales rep. And then I have to take what sales rep says and convert it to engineering and then do it. And you guys do it at such an insane rate. I always say I'm the, the conduit between the customer dealer and manufacturing and trying to understand the voice of the customer and or coming the other way during the build process, the the voice of manufacturing and asking uh, the dealer slash customer, you know, this is what we hear or what we're interpreting from the option that you have in the order. Is this what's expected? Sure. Yeah. And that's, that, that's a great, that's probably a more eloquent way to describe it than the way I did with all the languages. Um, but Hey, here's one for you. Do you, um, refer to the truck by the customer name or the job number? Customer name. But what's interesting is all of manufacturing knows it as a job number. So there's another way to, uh, even internally break down the system. Uh, you know, they'll call all oh, job three, four, two, eight, two. And I'm like, customer name, please. Right. <laughs> it's funny you say that because we were, we were out here with Aaron and he was like, he could remember his, like a specific uh, job number and he couldn't remember the customer name and it's about there's different people that are programmed different ways and i can't if you ask me like a specific i can't remember a job number but so, if a customer name names faces like that funny you say that i actually did that earlier today uh, as i said uh very much a customer name but this morning uh i was punching in a job and it was the wrong job but it was a a job from four years ago and i'm like oh yeah i remember you not a, it's not always a good thing, but it does happen. <laughs> that's fantastic. Wow, that's great. So I understand you have family members who work in Pierce too, is that right? Right. Uh, my wife, Jennifer, she is a director in the DT, uh, Digital Technology Group. Uh, she's been with Pierce, and I had to ask her to be sure, uh, 14 years with Pierce, and she actually started at Oshkosh Truck, and she worked there for seven years. So. Oh, that's awesome. How long have you been with the company? 33. Well, in August, 33. And so if you just added up, you guys are over 50 years. It's, it's crazy. I, it seemed like yesterday I just walked in the door and here we are. Do you ever refer to it as the family business then? No. I mean, I feel like that would play. Well, I, I can tell you that I, I, I owe an, an awful lot to Pierce and the Oshkosh Corporation because basically everything that I have is. They're, they're betting on you and you're betting on them. Right. Like every day. I'll tell you what, I'll show up every day. You keep paying me and I'll work till retirement. I think that's fair. That's, and that's, it's, <laughs> that is a very unique thing in today's world though, to get to, uh, to do 30 some years yeah. at a company. What I do enjoy is the, the fact of all of the, the different facets I've got to do starting, you know, on the shop floor so many years ago and getting to see all of the different areas and how, how a truck is actually built. What was your first job? Uh, the joke is I was an 85 DBA specialist, meaning, meaning I installed insulation packages in the tunnel to meet the, at the time, 85 DB decibel uh, sound rating for NFPA. So I would just sit, spend my whole shift. I was actually a student uh, at a local technical college at the time, and I, I spent my whole shift uh, cutting insulation and, and gluing it inside of a tunnel. And I bet when you were doing it, you were thinking, hey, if I do this right, one day I'll be on the Pierce Dispatch. Right, right. That, that's been my goal. <laughs> the whole time. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, perfect. Well, you, made, you did it. You arrived. And, uh, and what a thing to aspire to. Well, very good. So um, 
Let's talk a little more about like your role here and the requirements manager position uh, specifically. So you, you said you get to work with customers, final inspections, uh, pre-construction visits. Um, so you must get to work with just a variety of different people from the department. Um, talk to me about like truck committees and, and what, what makes up like a really good truck committee? What kind of people are on it? Well, um, what I found out that Usually, if you have a, a mechanic on the committee, that's a good thing. And I've also discovered that they actually make a lot more of the, the hard decisions than the, uh, the people using the trucks. And then at the same time, if you could bring in a, a cohesive group, right? People that have worked together before uh, on committees and have a, uh, a central focus on what it is the outcome is at the end of the truck. I do have occasions where People will come in and, well, this next visit, we're going to bring so-and-so with us. And then the visit after that and, and the idea of the perfect truck changes. So it's hard for us to adapt when the person coming in is like, oh, that's different than what I was thinking. Well, that's because someone else six months before made a different decision. So, yes. Yeah. So stay cohesive and understand, uh, a single line of thought from from inception to to final. And your role on the fleet team that must be even more important because of the consistency in the build. Right. So because at the same time with the the fleet program I'm taking this truck from the the moment it's a bid, right? We're thinking about buying a fire truck, I'm getting that phone call, getting that ready to go all the way up through the time when the PO is cut and the um it becomes a new booked order. That's the first let's say the second touch point I would have at it. Um, pick two engineering all the way through manufacturing and finally pick up. So what I get to enjoy along with the repetitiveness of the fleet program is I really get to know the customer or customers and see this, see it from cradle to grave. Yeah. And so when you're, when you're doing that, how, how many times are you seeing the customer like in a given build? Like if for, let's say, let's call it one truck. How many, how many times did you see it? I'd say two to four. Um, if, if a customer is lucky enough and what you do get with the fleet is they, they understand what they need because they're buying in higher volume. They have the repetitive buying cycle. So therefore they uh, have that ability to, before they even book the truck to, they may come here on a, a little bit of a fact finding mission and, and sit down with me or go, go around the plant and look at what's going on before they even book and uh, it helps tailor what it is that they're looking for. Then of course, a pre-construction review or a, a, a mid, and then of course that final. And then if we're real lucky, we break bread with them, have a, have a nice dinner or two and uh, send them on their way. That's awesome. So when they come in for that, that pre-construction, what's your favorite part of that, that, that pre-construction meeting? <laughs> My favorite part is how we seem to always to fit 10 pounds in a five pound bag. I, um, I enjoy when we, if I come in, especially if I'm, a, you know, I'll say not late, but they've already been working for a couple hours and we have our whiteboards and I'll see doodles and sketches and, or, or look at the, the big sales drawing up on the, on the wall and I'll look at some lines or what they have drawn. And I'll be like, so that's what we're going to reinvent today. Huh, fellas? Okay. All right. That's great. And, uh, what, what I tend to enjoy is just a lot of them have that aha moment, especially if it is because ultimately just through time, new people do come onto these committees and it might be their first, or they were only here for a final and, and they come in and they get to walk around the plant and realize all we can do, uh, for them and for the fire industry. It's really neat. They come back and, you know, well, we, what can we do? And it's like, as long as we're not breaking the laws of physics, I, I think we can do this. Right. Um, I enjoy when we draw something that's 10 feet wide, uh, and I'm, I'm being exaggerative here, 10 feet wide in a seven foot space. I'm like, so where's the other three feet going guys? You know, and you know, we have a little chuckle about it, but usually it's, it's what do you want to give up? Right. If sure we can do this, but maybe five different things have to either get moved, go away to, to make it all happen. So I, I have to ask the question, what, what is most important is 
we've, I joke and I'll say, so we're going to build the whole truck around this pike pole. Really? Oh, okay. Fine. Fine. fine let's do it. You know, I'm, I'm all in. It's just know that so we're going to have to do five different things to get that one widget in there and, and to be cognizant of that and uh, be open to suggestions. Sure. So like, how do you, how would you advise, obviously, how, I can't even imagine how many customer meetings you've had. How would you advise them to prepare for, for a pre-construction meeting? So once again, that's back to have a cohesive group, have, have an agenda, right? You're going to be here a day, two days, three days, whatever you feel um, you need, but then don't get too hung up on one thing. I've seen that so many times where I'll just say that word again, the pike pole, right? We're sitting there talking for three hours about a pike pole. We, time's, time's ticking, right? Everybody's here. Time's valuable. Let's, let's move on. And if we have to circle back to where we put in the pike pole, it's, it's maybe not the most important thing. There might be other things on your list, like what engine are we putting in? <laughs> Something along those lines. Uh, so uh, just to not, not get all caught up going down a path for, for the half a day about something when you still have many agenda items to fill. Sure. How about other like compartment layouts and they're trying to figure out how to put a compartment together? Um, well, I, thanks to, uh, the internet, right. And social media and everything else, nobody's too disconnected from what, what are others doing? Right. Uh, I, I get a lot of, uh, very, I'll call it artistic firefighters that uh, they'll, they'll use uh, something like Excel or Word and uh, maybe a, a, a simple drafting program. And they'll, they'll ask us, you know, specifically, what is the link width and depth of this compartment? We'll provide them that. And then they'll actually provide me with, a, you know, I'll, it's just typically simple rectangles or, or squares of shapes. It says, you know, I'm a, I'm a battery charger. I'm a, I'm a, a writ pack you know, I'm a nozzle, whatever, and lay that all out there because ultimately a lot of these departments, these things are a giant Swiss army knife. And as we see, especially on some of our aerial products, um, they're asked to do so many things, right? Because they, they don't have all the support that they may need that other departments do have. So suddenly not only are you carrying water, but you're also carrying extrication equipment. Oh, and then by the way, you're also a medic and there's only so much room in this thing. So you got to be efficient and be practical. Yeah, man. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. Like I just imagine how much that is to come into on your, for a trip to have that much prep work. But I think that's neat too. I mean, we, we, we joke around about, you know, coming here to eat and have the big meals and stuff like that, but it gives people the idea. It's a ton of work. Not even not just when they get here, right? Like in advance of it, right? Absolutely. Um, and is it a pre-count when they do the weight reviews? So the weight review uh, gets to actually done. It it can be done at multiple times. Uh, typically, or quite frequently, it's actually done even at bid. Um, as we were just talking about a minute ago, a ten pounds on a five pound bag, right? Uh, I'll look at the order, and I even at bid, I'll do a a weight review. And, uh, you know, give options, right? Hey, we're, we're over or you're, uh, you're, you're way under, you could possibly go down an axle. That that's honestly a more of a rare thing, but it actually gets done multiple times through the process. Typically what I, what we refer to as pick one or the, the first time our uh, engineering group takes a look at the fire truck, uh, it's my role to take a look at that, confirm the axles, you know, I'm doing a high level, can this be built? Right. Because ultimately, um, we send out questions and things of that nature and whether the customers meet locally where they're at, or if they're, if we're lucky enough to have them come in, um, that can be one of the action items on the list. Hey, we got to go up to a bigger axle or, you know, this may be a tire recommendation. There's all kinds of things that we do ask, but it's very common. And then along with that, depending upon what changes the customer has made at their pre-construction, 
it may add weight. They, they may have changed an engine. They may have added two seats. And it's all just, there's always this, there's always a yeah, but to it, right? I, I can look at it. I've done it long enough now that I can take a quick look at the customer changes and decide, okay, we've got thousands of pounds of reserve. We're going to be fine, right? And there's other times like, ooh, we got, you know, 100 pounds left on a 24,000 pound axle. It's like, well, you know, be, be aware. Well, when you say like, okay, there's the yeah, but how do you handle the things that are probably more firm, like the, the regulations and standards, like those have to come up at pre-con too. Absolutely. Um, I found that, of course, we're, we're talking about NFPA standards. Let th that whole uh, regulation is there in place for everyone's sake, right? And uh, don't, don't, don't ignore it. Absolutely. And when you talk about those safety items and things like that, they're, yes. they are, that's the standard. Right. Yeah. All right, so we talked uh, quite at length there about pre-cons. Let's talk a little bit about finals. How do customers or, or how should a customer prepare for their final inspection? Um, it does go back to what I said earlier about bringing the right people to the, to the final. But I would also say I've discovered that if, if you're picking up a truck, a day and a half to two days is probably all you really need you should be able to um, inspect the truck within that and and bring decision makers but but don't bring i get it it's a, it's it is kind of a mecca for firefighters but what ends up sometimes happening is is you just have too many people trying to make a decision that could have been done with two or three people sure. and it, it gets it ends up becoming diluted yeah that's an in-depth answer. What's your favorite part of finals that when the customer comes in? Um, I don't get it as much with fleet customers because they are, of, they've bought this truck more than once, right? But I enjoy going out on the blue floor with uh, a, a smaller department, you know, 50, 60, 70,000 population type, and they may have, I'll say, a, a blackout package or I'm all, you know, you go out on that blue floor and you see, holy cow, look at what we're doing today. I had no idea. And I'll, I'll engage with the customer and I'll be like, that is really neat. Where, where'd you think of that? Or why are we doing that? And it's, you know, it's their new, new truck. So they get really excited and they are, they're always very happy to, to explain to you exactly why and to, to talk to you about it. So that's the part I enjoy is maybe you could call it the wow factor. Yeah. One, well, I mean. You talk about like the changes to like a paint or a graphics package, even in fleet accounts. That's incredible. Like, um, uh, we were just at FDIC and Indy changed their, their scheme. Now oh, they have that gray over red instead of white over red. Okay. Okay. And I mean, it was like everyone's heads were turning, but it was neat not only to see customers looking at it or, or potential customers looking at it that were at the show, particularly the Indy firefighters that were in town. And we're so excited. Like, hey, there's engine 44, da, 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 da. Yeah. And they get to see the new yeah. the scheme and take pictures of it, send it to their families. Someone brought their own kids. Right. Uh, and um, um, and it was it was neat because like, we see that on the blue floor, yes. but it's to see the next level where it's that much closer to the customer. Right. And, yeah. to, and to where it actually is going to serve was really neat. Yeah. The times I've been at, to FDIC show, it's it's always neat when you do, like you said, you see a a family show up and can, can we sit in the truck? You absolutely can sit in the truck. Come on, let's go. And yeah. That's, that's a cool thing about getting to physically work here too, yes. where you're like, you don't realize you walk by them all the time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. How much it makes a difference to people. Yeah. That's cool. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to grill you on this one here. So you're at a final inspection. The customer uh, has been walking around the blue floor and walking around checkout. And they see something that they just have to have on a different truck that they want to add to their truck. What do you do? I say no. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Um, well, I start with, uh, and, and if I know they're going out on the floor, I'll be like, if you find something you absolutely need, don't tell me it's the third truck down on the right. I need a job number. Let's start with that, right? Um, and then I guess if it's add a bracket, move a bracket, screw something on, we're, we're always happy to, to work with you. Um, but just be aware if it's going to involve us getting a sawzall out and a welder, well, we will do that too. But just 
just be aware of what you're asking. And then of course the, the, the cost that would go with it at that late time frame is, is also a factor. Yeah. I've talked to customers about that too, in the past where you talked about that in-depth preparation for that pre-con and man, like when you're doing that pre-con, it's a lot easier to change something when it's on that whiteboard you were talking yep. about, but yep. when you, once it's metal, yep. man, once you start cutting the sheet metal, it's, it it's becomes easy. awfully expensive yes. Yes. Uh, for everybody. Yes. And I mean, it impacts lead times. And in most of these cases, you know, right now people are waiting a while for their trucks and yes, and impacting when you actually get it in service and, and all of that too. Um, I know I said that kind of like half joking, obviously about seeing someone else's truck here, but one of the neat parts too, is all that fellowship amongst all these fire departments from all over walk the life's coming together in Appleton or Bradenton and getting to meet, um, I'm here on the blue floor and do dinners and things like that. Can you talk a little bit about maybe, maybe an experience you've had like that of, of two departments coming together that may not have met if it weren't for peers? Sure. Well, I guess what I'm thinking of is. Uh, departments, they were, they were within the same state and, uh, no names will be used. Um, but as with anything, when you interact with people, right, we're all slightly different. We all come in with different ideas of what we're going to do while we're here, how we react, how we interact. And especially on finals, you know, we have very wide range of customers that come in and you don't know who they're going to what they're bringing with them when they come in. By that, I mean, are they concerned about how it pumps water? Are they concerned about um, the layout of the cab? Um, this particular little uh, quibit is uh, a particular customer that is just over the top with paint, right? And they were, the where they were parked, and there was, I'll say, a neighboring department. Um, and they, they, they were just happy to have a fire truck that functioned properly. And the, of course our, our paint is, is beautiful. Right. Um, but this one particular customer, um, was really a stickler for paint. And, uh, for those of the, you that know Pierce, um, what we do is at final is we give you a roll of 3M blue painters tape and it, you're welcome to go ahead and put the tape wherever you you'd like. Right. And whether it's a, a run, a scratch, blemish, fisheye, whatever. And, uh, they had their fire truck just peppered with blue and the other, the other department, they thought it was just the funniest thing ever. So what they did while they were out on their test drive is they took the, their rental car and they peppered it with blue tape. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, it, but it's, it's all in light humor and it's all in fun and you know, that type of thing goes on and you see this all the time with firefighters. They, they're, they're, uh, very respectful. They do what they need to do. They have a very hard job, but when they're off, uh, you know, they, they, they absolutely like to have a little fun. That's a great story. Can you tell me about, uh, when you talked about options that, Hey, there's some things that that, uh, yeah, we can make this change or not. What ones are okay to make the change on the blue floor? And which ones are you saying like, ah, that's, that's too much. That should have been caught at a, at an approval visit. Sure. Well, if it's something for starters, if, if it looks like something that we do on a lot of trucks and I'm, I'm just going to say a grab handle, right? That's something as simple as that. Add a grab handle all day long, every day, move a tag, um, unscrew where we said we wanted it. And now screw it over here all day long, no problem. Right. But if I guess it, it, it kind of can sometimes be, this is a long lead item. We don't have this in stock. It's of course it's time for us to be done and ship this truck. Right. That's our goal at that point. So if it's going to take two months to get something and uh, along with that, if, if you think we're going to have to get out, um, some heavy equipment to make it work. I, I always feel bad when it does have to happen because I think, well, I, I wouldn't want to have, go pick up my new pickup truck and say, I'll take the door off, you know, spin it around, hammer on it, throw it back on and repaint it. It's like, hey, yes, we'll do it. And, and I get the need, right? Cause when, if not now, then when, but just, just be cognizant of the, 
not only uh, what the impact to you, but to Pierce and, and what it's going to take to now get the work done. Yeah. That is like a, that is such a delicate balance on that. Cause you're exactly right. You want to get it exactly how they want it. I know many of our dealers do upfitting and things like that too. Even when, when they get the apparatus, uh, before it may even go to the, the customer. But, uh, again, those, those pre-cons are so vital, uh, to spending that time and getting it exactly how you want it and as best as you can, um, understanding we're all also human. Absolutely. It is tough. It's where it, when you. And then particularly like visual learners where it's, Hey, I just need to see it. You're like, Ooh, that's an expensive way to see it. You know, when you, when you go through there and that could be just a painful way to, to go about it. Um, so what about after the final, how do the customers set themselves up for success after delivery? Well, I can speak more to the fleet product in the sense that, um, ultimately these trucks are always evolving. Uh, when I first started fleet, I thought. Oh, the idea is, is this repetition, 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 which is a big part of it. But we have new product coming out. The, the companies we buy product from, I'll say lighting, right? They're coming out with new product, how people want to fight a fire, fire chiefs change. So the, the thought of how, how does the, this next truck going to look may change wildly between builds. So once you've taken delivery, just be aware that. You know, we put widget A here and, and just remember, maybe, maybe start a list early, you, you know, for the next build, this isn't going here, right? We're going to, we're, we found that in this particular environment that we put this truck in, this was something we didn't use, or we should have added a larger quantity of something. Just, you know, get that list started early so that when it, when we're all fortunate enough to, to go out for bid and possibly, uh sell another truck that, 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 that those new ideas are implemented when you, when you, uh, engage with your dealer. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So last question for you, you mentioned you've been doing this for 31 years, 33 in August, 33 years in August. So what has changed from the order and delivery process since, since you joined? Sure. Um, it's, I'll say just the sheer complexity of these vehicles. Um, I joke about my very, and, and I, in my previous role, uh, doing electrical work when a truck would have a strobe light on it, well, oh, the sky is falling. We got to put a strobe light on this truck. And now we are a, a million miles down the road. So technology, right now, when you pick up a truck, the, the, you know, you need to be kind of a, a, a tech savvy person. Cause there's so much going on with these trucks and there's so much that they can do. Um, specifically electric, ele electrically is what I always find neat. There's almost nothing we can do, right? It's, it's just a, a bunch of if thens, if we can do it, but it's, it's amazing to me the, what it takes, right. To build a fire truck now, cause there's so much overlaying technology throughout the truck as standard. And that's not even a loaded truck, right? With all of the options selected that we could do. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a unique one too. I think of that from like a manufacturability standpoint. And when you're, I mean, we've all heard it. Like when someone particularly someone who's like as seasoned as you at the company. And you know, when I started, we were able to do X, Y, and Z. And, and on my first day, it was like this and it's going, yeah, but your first day trucks were a lot less complex. Yeah you know, to, than they are today. And so when, when folks are coming right from a tech school and they're going through the training and things like that, and you see their jaws and, you know, drop. And I think it's neat that you obviously have the ability to start them on lane one products and things like that to, to get some of that memory. And there's so much training programs and things like that, that go into it. But also it's it, the P the over time, when someone spends that much time working on the truck, they truly become craftsmen when it's because they got to do it a little bit at a time. Right. And yeah, when the strobe is this, and now you think, yeah, with LED technology, you can yeah. do anything. I mean, I saw some of that stuff at FDIC. It was awesome. I mean, people are programming right from command zone right. and getting all these in the, what, what color do you want? What pattern do you want? And, and they were doing all that. It's fixed. Yeah. It's incredible. Fixed. Yeah. Yeah. And you're, and, and yeah, I guess on the inspection side, uh, if you just said that even five, 10 years ago, like, yeah, well, you're here at final, you can program your lights. <laughs> And I'm like, what, what, what do you mean? We need a special option. No, you don't. No, you don't. Hit the drop down menu, 
click here, you're fine. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> That's wild. Well, Jason, seriously, I appreciate you jumping on here. I actually have some for you. Oh, all right. Well, I mean, let me pull this over here. So this is an official Pierce Dispatch hoodie. I would anticipate you're going to hold on to this till the drop day because I know that you'll wear this the day this thing airs so the fleet team knows. Uh, and and we'll maybe we'll get you like a, some kind of a silver uh, marker or something you can sign it for everybody. You think that's fair? That sounds glorious. Thank, thank you so much. You're so kind. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks a ton again for jumping on the dispatch. And to all of our listeners, please stay safe out there. Thanks again.